So in this video, I'm going to show you how to make this first person character controller with horizontal movement, mouse looking and jumping. I'm starting out with just a simple floor. It's a static body and a collision shape so you can collide with it and a mesh instance so you can see it. So first we'll create a new scene with a character body 3D as its root node. This was called a kinematic body in Godot 3. Character body nodes are physics bodies that detect collisions as they move, if they are moved by calling their move and slide function. If you just set their position, they won't properly detect collisions along the way. The direction and amount of movement is determined by the value of its velocity property. And just to be clear, if the velocity property is set to something like 500, it does not mean it will move 5 meters along the x-axis each physics frame. It means it will move 5 meters per second in that direction. So the distance it moves will be 5 multiplied by the delta parameter, which is the time in seconds elapsed between each frame. So now add a collision body 3D and a mesh instance 3D, and give them a capsule shape and a capsule mesh. Then move both of these up so their bottom tips are at the scene's origin. This isn't necessary, I just think it makes setting the character's position a little more intuitive. Next, add a camera 3D and position it near the top of the capsule. Now we'll attach a script. When you attach a script to this node, it automatically comes with some boilerplate code. It works pretty well, but I'm just going to delete it so we can make this from scratch. So first I'm going to add back the speed and jump velocity, but as variables with lowercase spelling. And I'll export them so we can set them in the inspector. Then we'll add a physics process function where we'll write the movement code. But before we go any further, let's add some input mappings. This is how you reference player inputs with specific names you choose. You'll find this in the project settings here. Let's add a mapping for forward, backward, left, and right movement. To map an input, click this little plus icon, press the input, then hit OK. Now back to the physics process function. To access what inputs have been pressed, use the input singleton. This has a bunch of functions. One you'll probably use a lot is isActionPressed with the name of an input mapping as the argument. This will return 1 for as long as the character is holding down the input, and 0 if the player isn't pressing it. If you only want this to return 1 once, when the player first presses the input, you'll use isActionJustPressed. Another good one to know is get axis. This takes two arguments, a negative action and a positive action. If the negative action is pressed, this will return negative one. If the positive action is pressed, it will return positive one. And if neither is pressed, it will return zero. For the horizontal movement, we'll be using get vector. This is like get axis, except with four arguments across two axes. The first two are the negative and positive actions for the x axis, and the third and fourth are the negative and positive actions on the y axis. The negative and positive x arguments will be move left and move right respectively, and the negative and positive y arguments will be move forward and move backward, and yet, yeah, move forward is negative. Then we'll normalize this vector. This prevents the character from moving faster when moving diagonally. We're also going to multiply this by the character's speed, which will make this a velocity. The velocity property only takes the character body's position into account. It doesn't care which way the body is facing. So we're going to set this property using the node's basis. The basis contains three perpendicular normalized vector threes, one for each axis in 3D space relative to the node. So the x vector points to the node's right, the y vector points up, and the z vector points backwards from the node. The negative versions of these vectors point along the same axes but in the opposite directions. So we'll multiply the x vector of the basis by the x value of the horizontal velocity, and multiply the z vector basis by the y value. Then we'll add them together and set them to the character body's velocity property. Now we'll implement the vertical movement. When the character is not on the floor, we want the character's velocity on the y-axis to continuously decrease until it makes contact with the ground again. The y-value of the velocity property is set to zero up here every frame, so we'll create a variable up top that carries the value over. We will also grab the acceleration due to gravity from the project settings like this. Then back in the physics process function, we can check if the character is airborne by using the isOnFloor function. If it returns true, we'll set the y-velocity to zero, and if it returns false, we'll decrease it by the gravity value. Acceleration is how much velocity changes each second, so we'll multiply the gravity value by the delta parameter. After that if-else statement, we'll set our y-velocity variable to the y-value of the built-in velocity property. And also, within the true part of that if-else statement, we can check to see if the player has pressed the jump key. If so, we'll set the y-velocity to the jump velocity value. Make sure this happens after the statement that sets the y-value to zero, and to use is action just pressed. So now our velocity property is fully set, we just need to call move and slide to actually tell the node to move by that velocity. Now we'll handle rotation. First, we'll need to set the mouse mode to capture. This will hide the cursor and lock it in the middle of the screen. We'll have this toggled when the player presses the escape key. This is mapped to UI cancel by default. So we'll set the mouse mode to capture if the mouse mode is equal to mouse mode visible, and if not, then we'll set it to visible. Create an input function. This is called every time there is any kind of input. The event parameter can be a number of different objects depending on the type of input. Since rotation is controlled by mouse movement, we only want this code to run if the player has moved the mouse. We can check this by seeing if the event is an input event mouse motion. Then we'll get the relative property from the event. This is a vector 2 that keeps track of how much the mouse has moved since the last frame. X contains the amount the mouse has moved left and right, and Y contains the amount forward and back. Moving the mouse left and right should rotate the character around the Y axis, so we'll call rotate Y with the relative X as the argument. Moving the mouse forward and back should cause the character to look up and down, but we don't want to rotate the character body node. If we do that, the controls will get all wonky. Instead, we'll rotate the camera. So first we'll create a reference to that camera, and then call rotate x on it with relative.y as the argument. We also want to make both these arguments negative or else the mouse look will be inverted. 
Now we need to create a variable to control the sensitivity here since it will be way too high to start. I'm going to call it look sensitivity and set it to 0.05. I like to have the sensitivity as a global variable in the project settings, so open those up, turn on advance, and then add player slash look sensitivity. And now we have a player section in the project settings containing this variable. We then retrieve this variable's value the same way we did with the gravity. Lastly, to stop your character's head from doing somersaults when you look too far up or down, you can clamp the camera's X rotation after setting it in the input function. Since radians are used for rotation in Godot, the X rotation when looking directly upwards will be half of pi, and negative half of pi when looking directly downwards. The clamp function takes the value being clamped as its first parameter, which will be the camera's x rotation, the minimum value as its second parameter, which will be negative half of pi, and the maximum value as its third, and that will be positive half of pi. And then we'll set the return value of the clamp function to the x rotation of the camera. So after all that, the x rotation will be set to half of pi or negative half of pi if it goes above or below these values respectively. Also, if you notice a thin flickering line across the screen when you're playing, this can be fixed by making the player character's mesh instance invisible or just removing it entirely. If you'd like to subscribe, I'm going to try to make at least one video a week, hopefully two. If there's a topic you'd like me to cover, let me know in the comments section below. And if I feel competent enough in it, I'll get around to covering it at some point. Hopefully this video was helpful and thanks for watching.